Although Arabia is now being referred to as the other Garden of Eden because of its significance in human evolution, Africa has long been thought of as the place where humanity first emerged. According to new research, Arabia was not just a stopover for early humans as they left Africa, but rather a lush homeland where they thrived and evolved. In fact, many researchers now agree that Arabia should be considered a part of Greater Africa, and that the peninsula was crucial to the spread of humanity throughout the world. Geographically, climatically, historically, archaeologically, and culturally, Arabia belongs to a larger Africa. Both of these factors have obvious implications within the out-of-Africa context, which is defined in its broadest sense to encompass both the more recent expansion of modern humans as well as the earlier contexts of the expansion of earlier hominin species. For instance, a recent genetic study put forth the theory that modern humans spent 30,000 years in this area to acclimate to colder climates, before exploding out of Arabia to colonize the world around 60,000 years ago. The Arabia standstill hypothesis is what people are calling this. 300,000 years ago, the great revolution that put man on the path to civilization began. Man made a wider variety of more complex stone tools as he transitioned from being an animal chasing other animals. The lengths of Jebel Fire, a limestone mountain outlier close to the Gulf of Oman, range between 6.2 and 12.4 miles. Small hand axes, foliates, end and side scrapers, and denticulates are some of the recovered tools. At the time of its discovery, it was believed to be the oldest settlement of anatomically modern humans discovered outside of Africa, with its deepest assemblage dating to 125,000 years ago. Since then, discoveries from an even earlier time, 150,000 years, have been made in the Levant's Mislia cave. Although no human fossils have been discovered at Jebel Fire, archaeologists contend that anatomically modern humans produced the artifacts. This is due to the tool's greater resemblance to modern East and Northeast African technology than to that discovered at other sites on the Arabian Peninsula. As a result, the Jebel Fire evidence has been used to support the theory that modern humans first spread out from Africa through southern Arabia, and into southern Asia. It is believed that Homo sapiens, who were living in Africa at the time, used stone tools, indicating that they may have spread farther and faster than previously believed. Now, stone artifacts discovered in the hostile Nafud Desert of Saudi Arabia show that our genus Homo had left the familiar confines of Africa and the Levant sometime between 300,000 and 500,000 years ago. Additionally, the environment they moved into might not have been all that different from the one they left behind in East Africa, based on climate data preserved in animal bones discovered at the site. The stone flakes appear to have been struck from a prepared core, which is a fairly sophisticated technique typically attributed to modern humans or Neanderthals. However, the toolmakers were most likely members of earlier hominin species between 300,000 and 500,000 years ago. The bones found next to the long-forgotten tools contain ancient environmental records that indicate the area was very different, at the time. The first hominins to enter Asia and Europe were not of our species. Modern humans first came into contact with other members of the genus Homo who had traveled much earlier, starting with Homo erectus around 1.9 million years ago when they started slowly spreading across the globe before 100,000 years ago. Some paleoanthropologists claim that in contrast to modern humans, who have a special ability to adapt to a wide range of extreme environments, from deserts to tropical forests to the chilly climate of Siberia, our ancestors preferred to live in the same familiar patchwork landscapes of grasslands and trees located near lakes or rivers. Others, however, have argued that the widespread existence of some extinct groups shows that they were, in fact, just as adaptable as we are. The Arabian Peninsula has remarkably been absent from discussions about early human expansions until recently, despite its crucial geographic position at the crossroads between Africa and Eurasia. However, recent research on climate models, cave records, lake records, and animal fossils has revealed that there was a time in the past when the harsh, hyperarid deserts that today cover much of Arabia were replaced by a greener, environments that would have made an appealing environment for different hominin populations. One finger found deep in the desert demonstrates that when people left Africa, they didn't just stick to the coasts and stay in the Levant, they also spread to Arabia, where there had previously been lakes and hippos. It has been determined that a single finger bone discovered in Saudi Arabia that dates to 85,000 years ago is human, 
which is altering the conventional wisdom regarding human migration out of Africa. The unexpected finding at a location in the middle of the Saudi desert demonstrates that modern humans left Africa in multiple waves and much earlier than previously believed. The fossil's location far from the ocean also suggests that the theory that early humans left Africa by hugging the coasts is incorrect. If anything, the bone's potential to reveal information about our prehistory is actually underestimated by itself. It's interesting to note that the stone toolkits connected to Worcester have been discovered in earlier periods in Arabia, dating back more than 200,000 years. The widely accepted theory up until recently was that Homo sapiens migrated in large numbers out of Africa 60,000 years ago. Then, evidence started to mount that small groups of hunter-gatherers had started to gradually leave the continent much earlier. Archaeologically, a jawbone found in the northern Levant in a cave called Mislia, which also dates to about 200,000 years ago, is the earliest known instance of Homo sapiens outside of Africa. According to Petralia, the Mislia evidence shows that Homo sapiens started leaving Africa about 190,000 years ago. However, some scientists claim that Israel is geographically a part of Greater Africa and are less than blown away by the Mislia cave discovery. And now comes the Saudi evidence of human existence occurring much earlier than anticipated, not in Africa, and far from a coast. In the Levant, Additional fossil evidence points to additional migrations between 130,000 and 90,000 years ago. Can we identify the owner of this one tiny fossil, an intermediate phalanx from a finger? He explains that Neanderthals were eliminated because the finger would have been too gracile for that larger species. The finger bone fits comfortably inside the range of variation for Homo sapiens and outside the range for Neanderthals, according to a very thorough morphological and scientific comparative analysis. They therefore attribute it to Homo sapiens. 380 stone tools total, mostly made of quartzite and chert sediment rock, were also discovered by the archaeologists. The tools matched contemporaneous assemblages in the Levant, such as that found at the cave in Kafzeh, in the Lower Galilee, and later discoveries in Arabia. Which brings up the important question of whether anatomically modern people were trickling out of Africa, here and there. Or if Arabia and Asia were occupied for a longer period of time than is generally believed, which has not been answered by the various finds in the Levant and now Arabia. In any case, early Homo sapiens penetrated far into the semi arid interior of Arabia, not just emerging from Africa to the wet Levant. It illustrates how adaptable humans are. A small group of Homo sapiens stopped to drink and forage at a shallow lake that was also frequented by camels, buffalo and elephants larger than any species seen today around 120,000 years ago in what is now northern Saudi Arabia. Seven out of the hundreds of prints found were confidently identified as belonging to hominins, including for whose similar orientation, separation from one another, and size differences suggested that two or three people were traveling together. The researchers contend that these belong to anatomically modern humans rather than Neanderthals because it is unknown whether they were living in the wider Middle East region at the time, as well as based on estimates of the prince mass and stature. Elephants would have made particularly appealing prey and their presence, also suggests other areas with an abundance of freshwater resources and vegetation. Elephants had become extinct in the nearby Levant region about 400,000 years prior. Early humans are known to have traveled to Eurasia via southern Greece and the Levant, taking advantage of coastal resources along the way. However, new research suggests that inland routes that followed lakes and rivers may have also been crucial. It's possible that the presence of large animals like elephants and hippos, as well as open grasslands and abundant water sources, made northern Arabia a particularly alluring location for people traveling between Africa and Eurasia. The earliest known footprints associated with Homo sapiens were found by archaeologists in South Africa, and they date back 153,000 years. The researchers do point out that rather than the shape of the tracks themselves, the attribution of the tracks to a particular species is based more on skeletal remains and archaeological artifacts. Since not all websites offer conclusive evidence, disputes and debates are likely to persist. What happened to these people after these abundant environments dried up is the million-dollar question. Do they no longer exist? Did they eventually move into more welcoming environments? These are still questions that need to be answered.